welcome Bishop Long. Uh, Bishop Long is the per Bishop of uh, Parramatta Diocese and he's our guest speaker today in our session to called In Relationship with God Through Formation of Our Heart. Bishop Long's topic is Francis and Francis Lighting the Path, Franciscan spiritual, Eco-Spirituality in Light of Pope Francis. Welcome, Bishop Long. Oh, thank you, uh, Bernard, and um, good afternoon to you and to um, our friends who might follow us uh, through this uh, webinar. We have... Uh, over 100 people registered for this session. It's actually our most popular session dealing with our faith and, and the way it engages with eco-spirituality. From my own perspective, my memories of Sir Francis is all around the canticle of creation. Mm. I'm wondering from your perspective, has he, what else has he taught us which has laid the platform for Pope Francis's great work on Laudato Si? Mm. Thank you, Bernard. Well, Pope Francis himself said in, in that encyclical that you mentioned that he took um, the name Francis as his uh, guide when he became Pope um, because he, he wishes to follow the footsteps of uh, his namesake, something that no uh, popes uh, pr prior to him uh, have done. So it's quite... Um, revolutionary in a way, um, the, the, the choosing of the name of Francis Vassis in itself. Um, and we see the, the influence of St. Francis in so many aspects of, uh, of this pontificate. Uh, of course, the great encyclical on the environment is uh, attributed to this Franciscan inspiration. Uh, the, the title Laudato Si itself um, taken from the canticle of the sun or canticle of creatures uh, that St. Francis composed in his native um, Umbrian Italian. Uh, uh, here the, 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 the saint saw all creatures, big or small, um, as um, um, fundamentally related to, um, to uh, human beings as, as brothers and sisters. Uh, so um, in this way, in this, this um, relationship of fraternity, um, we humans are, are not lords uh, or, or masters of uh, uh, the natural world. Uh, and certainly we're not meant to exploit them for economic benefit. Rather, we are stewards and servants entrusted with the work of uh, caring for all creation and ensuring the flourishing of all things, all creation, as the creator uh, intends it. So um, for me, uh, the, uh, one of the greatest insights that of, of St. Francis in, in the Canticle of Creatures is, is that um, we are related to the natural world in a sacred harmony and communion, this, this notion of communion as opposed to dominion, you know, which has um, characterized a human relationship with the natural world. You know, we see the natural world as, uh, as a hostile place, as a place to be conquered and, and exploited. But in, in the canticle of the sun, you know, Francis saw everything as um, brother or sister. Um, related to us in that sacred harmony and, and communion. We might be on top of the food chain, but our very survival depends on our partnership with every form of life. That's the insight that Pope St. Francis has. So we need a, a, a radical new way of uh, relating and living uh, so that uh, we can bring harmony, we can bring sustainability to, to all of life and not just, you know, the human-centered world. Um, because we are part of the um, cosmic web of creation. We are not apart from it. You know, we're, we're not lords and masters, but we are part of this uh, wonderfully interconnected cosmic web of creation. And so we need to, to, to live this new um, paradigm, as it were, 
paradigm of, of communion. And, and um, that is, I think, the, 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 the greatest, one of the greatest lessons that, that, that Pope Francis um, highlights for us in, in that encyclical Laudato Si. So you've probably answered this in many ways, uh, Vincent. The Franciscan eco-spirituality is really promoted heavily through Laudato Si. What do you think is the significant difference between Franciscan eco-spirituality and the other different congregational uh, efforts to care for our common home? Um, I, I think... Um, uh, um, the, the charisms of religious life generally are based on this uh, fundamental notion that uh, that that um, we uh, have a sacred relationship with um, God's natural world. But um, uh, what Francis did more than uh, the other religious uh, founders, if you like, um, did was to uh, accentuate that aspect of of, of being of, of of the human beings being part of a larger whole you know um, so our flourishing our survival uh, as as a species depend on the well-being of of everything on the planet mm. um, so if we think of ourselves as as a small uh, unrelated individuals on this earth, then we will create a very small, puny, individualist world that cannot survive, let alone flourish. So, on, on the other hand, if we think of ourselves as being part of a of larger whole, we think in terms of um, stewardship, we think in terms of participation, we think in terms of evolution, uh, we think in terms of the um, uh, sustainability and viability of all things. Um, and so we have a chance to rewire ourselves, as it were, for, for a new existence. Uh, and, and it's so critical, I think, in this day and age when we, we see the world or the, not the, the planet uh, heading to ruins uh, because of the exploitation and because of um, the framework of individualism and, 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 and tribalism and nationalism. Uh, yes. That doesn't facilitate um, that, that sense of communion, that sense of interdependence of all things, you know. Yes. So... Um, I think that's what um, St. Francis, uh, more than other um, religious figures in history, has, has done. Yeah. One of the things you mentioned uh, is the fact that we are only a very small part of a much larger global society. Pope Francis um, created a video just recently talking about COVID-19 and how that we if we keep doing what we're doing in our own economic models, we could set ourselves up for huge failures. And this post-COVID recovery gives us an opportunity for great success if we can reconsider our positions. Mm. Just wondering, in what other ways, apart from the data C, do you see Pope Francis lighting the way for us as global Catholics and secular movements as well? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I think um, Pope Francis calls us to move beyond the, the, the status uh, or the security of the status quo and, and take the risk of going to the periphery. And he, he often says that, uh, you know, the church must be the church of the poor. Um, and, and I think this, this notion of being in solidarity, in communion with the poor, is, is something, again, that, that St. Francis himself um, um, uh, brought to the fore, you know, um, because um, being poor uh, uh, it isn't just uh, about being materially poor, it, it's about um, not being possessive, 
it's about the ability to to let go about ability to um, to take only what you need um, and that's what nature does you know, nature is not about um, uh, um, uh, you know uh, conquest and 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 dominion uh, nature is about cooperation nature is about um, um, group gatherings and and so um, the the uh, consumerist uh, capitalist economy system um, of buying life at any cost is is collapsing is is because it's not um, it's not viable it's not sustainable um, and we will perish under these conditions too unless we return to the roots of of nature and rewire ourselves to be part of nature to uh, we need to to have that conversion of mind and heart and francis talks a lot about that you know that ecological conversion you know um, a conversion of uh, mind and heart that leads to the conversion of of, of lifestyle so um, i think that some of the things that francis um, Pope Francis um, um, is lighting the way for us as a as a global um, community going forward. That's a great segue into our final question, Vincent, because for our Australian Church, everyone is at different stages of this formation and this conversion of heart. I'm wondering about aspirational goals for the Catholic Church in Australia as a agency of the catholic church catholic earth carers has this convocation has created it to try and bring all our hearts together to care for our common home mm -hmm. and we have a focus on eco spirituality eco theology and particularly around the financial and economics component we pre-recorded a session with ross garno the other night and he was very very strong on the fact that we need to create a system which is there for the common good mm -hmm. very much what you're talking about I'm just wondering, in that vein, what could be our aspirational goals as a Catholic Church to care for our common home? Mm. Well, um, uh, you mentioned that we we have um, um, a disagreement in a lot of um, areas, but um, uh, we, we we should begin with um, a, a common ground, and 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 the common ground. As far as the gospel is concerned, is that we, we should live life um, simply, poorly, and sustainably. Um, and the fact is, you know, um, we, we live in one of the, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the largest exporters of natural gas and, and coal and, and, and fossil fuel energy, you know, Australia. Um, uh, and, and individually, you know, Australians are responsible for producing huge amounts of greenhouse gases. Uh, we have one of the highest per capita emissions of carbon dioxide in, in the world. So we cannot simply leave these problems uh, to the big players like governments and energy companies and industry leaders and, and the like. I think there are practical measures that what we all can do uh, and especially as gospel-centered people can do to to re reduce the carbon footprint, as it were, um, and I and I think um, investing in renewable energy, divesting from fossil fuels, consuming less and wasting less, must be the way forward for Christians um, living in, uh, in 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 this um, century, uh, where where the the consciousness of um, a fragile planet is, is heightened and, and we need to give new expressions to the Beatitudes, to live in poverty, to live in simplicity, to live in communion with all things um, that are. Um, rebuilding the sense of um, personal, social, uh, and even political identity for a world of change and complexity. Um, and I think it, it, it is, uh, in spite of everything, um, 
uh, the most exciting time in, in history because you know we have the capacity to change the direction of our um, of our world one of the um, and this is a, an unscripted question here but a very practical one we're asking each of our participants to think about one thing that they can do that's within their control when they listen to each person's speech and the people that they can influence so we're talking about our locus of control our circle of influence within our area of concern i'm wondering if you were to go away and write down what is one thing that you do in your life or would do in your life to help change the future what would that one thing be mm. um well um um you know as a um, uh, as a franciscan um, um i'd like to think that um living in s simplicity living in uh in s in radical um communion and solidarity um, um with all that is uh is is the uh, the, the very um, uh, framework of life, um, and and uh, that is a thing that I'm committed to, Bernard. Um, but also to 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 stand in solidarity with people on the margins, uh, to stand in solidarity with with um, the suffering world. Uh, because we live in an interconnected world, yeah, and 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 I think that 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 is bringing the gospel to life. That is uh, living, um, uh, the, living the, the 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 marrow, the, the 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 kernel of the gospel. That is wonderful. Thank you so much, Bishop Vincent, for your time for us today. Uh, we would just like to thank you on behalf of Caritas Australia and Catholic Earth Care Australia for your participation, your uh, chairing, interim chairing of our, our Caritas uh, National Council, our, our new board uh, in this time of transition. And thank you very much for your handy hints on all the ways that we ourselves can also be very practical in, uh, within our circles of influence, within our areas of control. Thank you, Bernard. And it's been a, a, a pleasure and an honor I, I wish you and, um, and, and Caritas and Catholic Earthcare well in your endeavor to um, shape the world according to the vision of Laudato Si'.